Hello again everyone and welcome back to another Pokemon challenge video. I'm Harry or HZRC and this time can I beat Pokemon Sword only using Mew. If you haven't seen the last video where I took on Pokemon Shield using the free Alolan starters, make sure to check it out after this video. I've been planning to do this challenge for a while now and although it's been suggested a few times, I really like the rules that just the random dino commented. Well, apart from the Pokemon Shield one, because I really don't hate myself that much to have to fight Alistair. I had loads of fun with this challenge, as even without TRs, Mew had great type coverage and solid stats with 100 across each. If you enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could subscribe, as I do loads of interesting Pokemon challenges here on the channel. As always, make sure to tell me what challenge you would like to see next down in the comments below, and I will consider them for the next video. Anyway, that's definitely enough rambling from me, let's get straight into the challenge. Okay, let's run through the rules as I have quite a few this time. First, I can only use Mew in battle after transferring it from Pokemon Home. Second, I can't use any glitches or exploits to help me progress through the game. Third, I can't use any items in battle except for held items. And fourth, I'm not allowed to use any TRs, only TMs. I tried to keep to the minimum amount of battles and stay the same level as the gym leader's ace, but there was a few occasions where I accidentally ran into a trainer that I could have avoided, so I won't include these as proper rules but I tried my best to stay as low level as possible. With that out of the way, I begin the challenge by naming myself H with a bunch of Zeds as I was pretty tired when filming this playthrough. I'm very funny. Picking Score Bunny, I smashed Hop to the ground and rushed through to get in my Pokedex, allowing me to transfer in Mew from Pokemon Home. I have a level five Mew from the 2010 event, which will be the perfect starter Pokemon, so let's bring that in. You may have noticed that I had a second Mew in that box. And you may also know that I give away Pokemon on my Discord. So maybe if you want a chance to win Mew, you should come join my Discord, right? Please join my Discord, I need friends. Booting up Pokemon Sword, here is my level 5 Mew. This is a real Mew from the Pokemon Pearl event way back in 2010. You can probably see it's in a Cherish Ball and has a Premier Ribbon. Then again, I don't even know if this proves it's real anymore, so you're just going to have to trust me. Heading up Route 2, I should have grabbed TM Payback, but I forgot, so let's have a battle against Hop with only Pound. Mew has way higher stats than any Pokemon at this stage in the game, so we win the battle with ease, taking all three Pokemon, barely losing any HP. Leon gives me an endorsement for discovering a Pokemon not even in the Galar decks, and then we grab TM Payback before heading to the wild area. Hop gives us TM Swift, which we teach to Mew before leaving home and never returning. Reaching the wild area with nothing but a Mew, we gather some supplies in the form of TM Bulldoze and grab an apple before heading into Motostoke. Mom gave us some pocket money, so let's waste it all on new clothes. And then I head up to the league challenge to sign up with number 151, because it's Mew's number, right? Hashtag bring back national decks. I'm joking, I'm joking, please don't comment that. I whoop some team yell grunts in the hotel lobby, and now it's time to take on Hop in a second battle. I still don't have a psychic type stab move here, so I start off with two swifts to take out the Wooloo. Grookey is no trouble either, and three more swifts take it out. To finish Rookie, taking two more hits with Swift wins the battle against Hop pretty swiftly. Haha, <laughs> I'm such an idiot, seriously. Straight through Route 3 in the mines, now it's time to fight Bead the Miner. That TM payback we picked up earlier makes this battle easy. Or you could say I beat this battle swiftly. Wait, I don't think that works here, does it? I lied about this battle being easy and I barely managed to take down the Stelosis after a payback takes us low and it uses Endeavor to equalize the HP damage. A second payback and we take it out. Hatina is up next and a payback takes it low and luckily Mew survives on 2 HP allowing it to hit next turn with a payback. Thankfully I'm spared the embarrassment of losing to Bead the Noob and survive Psybeam and 2 paybacks win us the battle. Wow if I didn't have leftovers I probably would have lost that. Before we take on the gym I grab TM Pin Missile on Route 4 which will be super effective and likely very useful against the first gym. If I end up missing any TMs on this playthrough that would have been useful, make sure to tell me down in the comments below. Here we go, it's time to fix the first gym. A pin missile onto Gossifleur hits several times, taking it out easily in one move. With Elder Goss out, I Dynamax and use Max Flutterby, dealing under half HP and damage. A return Max Overgrowth does nothing to Mew and I win the battle with two more Max Flutterbys, beating the first gym pretty easily. Milo the guy with seeds as his nose hands us the grass badge and then we head onwards to the next gym. I whip some team yell grunts on the next route to earn myself a bike and now it's time to do the same against Hop. Well without earning another bike. Wheelie was up and two hits from Swift easily take it out. 
Corvus Squire is no trouble either, and continuing to spam Swift, we take it down easily, leaving just Big Grookey, who also faces the wrath of fast moving stars and is easily taken down. Hopefully the challenge stays this easy, but somehow I really don't think it will. Making it to Hullbury, we have a quick chat with Captain Underpants over here before we head down to the second gym. But before I head there, I grab TM Electro Web, which would be very useful in this water type gym. I start the gym with an immediate Dynamax and then use Max Lightning, which wipes out both Goldeen and Aracuda in just one hit, leaving just the Dreadnought. Using a third and final Max Lightning almost wins the battle in three hits, leaving Dreadnought on low. One Electro Web and we win the battle super easy, earning the second gym badge. Heading into Galar Mine, we meet everyone's favourite miner, Bead, who wants another battle. Solosis is still the first Pokemon out, and this time I use Pin Missile with its potential to hit 5 times, and 2 hits take it down. Gofita is sent out and another Pin Missile hits 3 times knocking it out no problem. Even with the addition of Ponyto to his team, Bead still sucks and I take it down with another Pin Missile. Hey, and guess what? Another Bug Type Artillery one last time to win the battle without any of Bead's Pokemon even getting an attack in. Maybe Mew is just a bit OP this early in the game. I clear out some Team Yell Grunts who have been mining for diamonds and then make it back to Hammerlock ready to take on the next gym. But before that we have our first battle against Marnie. Mew is still super strong against his base form Pokemon and I start by taking out Krogunk with a super effective Bulldoze. Scraggy is no issue either and a few Swifts take it down leaving just the more Peko. Using a Bulldoze does some good damage and after surviving a bite one more Bulldoze finishes the battle. Now let's head to the third gym to Battle Hop. Thankfully it's not, but every challenge run I always expect this to be a battle against Hop for some reason. I think it's just him stood there being so intimidating. He's just always lurking in the background. Hop's gonna come kill you while you're sleeping. Time to beat Kabu and his fire type gym. Using Bulldoze should make this gym a breeze. I start with a Bulldoze onto Ninetales dealing half HP, but I obviously get burnt by Will-O-Wisp as always, so our attacks would be way less powerful. With the reduced attack, it takes 3 more hits from Bulldoze to take it out, but Mew is left on half HP. Reaching level 30 here, Mew learns Ancient Power, which is a special attacking move and also super effective, allowing me to avoid the reduction from Burn. Arcanine is sent out and a further reduction to my attack makes this Ancient Power even more beneficial. With just 2 Pokemon remaining, I Dynamax and use a Max Rockfall to take out the Arcanine in one hit. Just Kabu's ace, Center Scorch remains and a 4 times super effective Max Rockfall takes it down super easy to win us the gym badge. If I didn't have Ancient Power here, I don't think this would have been so easy, so I got pretty lucky when I leveled up here. With 3 gyms down, it's time to head to Hammerlock on our way to Stuon side. But first, the gym leaders have come to say anyone who isn't subscribed to HZRC should right now. On the last video, only 3% of viewers were subscribed. So how about you guys fix that please? Sorry about that, I, I don't know why they had to say that, but they seemed really keen to. Making it to Hammerlock, I now have access to some good TMs that I can purchase in the Pokemon Center. Here I purchase Brine and Thief, which are both fairly powerful moves for Mew to use at this stage in the game. I was looking for more moves that would be super effective against the upcoming Fighting Gym, but I couldn't find any. If I missed some obvious ones, obviously make sure to tell me down in the comments below. After speaking to this guy in glasses, he shows me his plan to create the Eye of Sauron in Galar. I'm not really sure how no one knew this guy was going to be evil, right? With a bit of story rubbish to spam through, now it's time to head up to Stoneside and take on the gym. Making it to Stoneside, I grab a useful TM Venoshock before fighting Hop in another battle. Hop sends out Cramorant for the first and only time and we take it down easily with two ancient powers. Fwacky is sent out and is actually a bit of a threat here with knockoff, which does some good damage to Mew and removes our leftovers. I managed to take it down with two Venoshocks, taking about half HP in damage. Silicobra is bad and falls to one brine, leaving just Toxel, which also sucks. Two hits from Ancient Power and it's gone. We beat up Hop so bad that one of his eyes is now permanently blind. Sorry Hop. The fighting type gym is coming up and I had hoped for a psychic type move moving into this gym, but I couldn't find any. I settled for TM Fly, which is found in a building just outside the gym. Pretty convenient to be honest. It's time for the fighting gym. This should be pretty easy with our psychic resistance and a super effective flying move. It's probably going to be pretty tedious though as I'm just going to spam fly the whole battle. Hitmontop is B's first Pokemon sent out and two flies take it down no problem. Pangoro with its dual dark and fighting type here could be a problem and after one fly takes a third of its HP a return night slash takes Mew down to half. 
Assuming this next fly lands, which it does, we take down the Pangoro. Sir Fetched uses a Detect on his first turn, which allows us to hit it on the second with Fly. A return Brutal Swing does some good damage onto Mew, but leftovers help to keep our HP topped up. It took Bea a while, but she finally figures out that Fly is my only strategy and this time uses Detect on the second's turn. I was going to say that was pretty smart, but then apparently just completely forgets the next turn and we take down Sir Fetched with another Fly. With just G-Max Machamp left, doing our own Dynamax and using Max Airstream twice wins us the battle. B hands us a fighting badge and now it's time to stop her evil alternate form, Bead, from smashing up the mural outside. Duosion is up and Fief takes it to just a sliver of health, leading to a super potion. This doesn't heal it all the way and a second Fief manages to finish it. I use the wrong move on Hatrim and a Venoshock does barely anything to start off, but then I follow up with the right move and two Steel Wings take it down. Gofferita is swept no problem with two more attacks from Fief, leaving just Ponyta, which is also taken down from another Fief to win us the battle. This time Beat isn't sent to jail, but instead we all agree that the best way for him to learn is just ban him from the league challenge. I know, I know, the main story is boring. I prefer the one where Beat always goes to jail. Through the pathetic Glimwood Tangle and we are ready to take on the Fairy Gym. I doubt this gym's going to be difficult either as we have super effective poison and steel type moves to use, especially when we get extra stat boosts for answering questions in battle. Weezing is the first Pokemon sent out and a super effective steel wing does some good damage leaving it just above half HP. A second steel wing takes it super low and Weezing follows up with sludges which had me pretty worried about getting poisoned. Thankfully we don't get poisoned and Opal doesn't use a potion allowing us to take it down with a third hit. Just three Pokemon left now and I decide it's a good idea to Dynamax. A Max Quake is super effective and Moile is taken down to red. Moile has crunch but with the added HP from Dynamax it allows us to tank it pretty well and the second Max Quake finishes it off. I haven't needed any Dynamax candies so far in this run so my goal is to beat the whole game without any. The final Max Steel Spike takes Togekiss to under half and I finish with an Ancient Power next turn leaving just the Alchemy. Steel Wing is my highest power super effective move so I start with that but somehow the giant cake manages to dodge it even though it literally looks like it can't move. I guess that makes sense right, it's Pokemon. I try again with Steel Wing and it deals half HP but Alchemy is able to heal itself with G-Max Finale. It takes two more Steel Wings but we finally finish the battle and Mew is able to comfortably stay above half HP for the whole battle. Hopefully the difficulty starts to increase soon because I really haven't had any problems so far. I head back to Hammerlock with Opal after beating the gym which takes us about 50 hours to walk there because Opal is just so slow. Now I have a few things to do here before my next battle against Hop. We now have access to this Pokemon Center which allows me to get the elemental fang moves as TMs which will likely be very useful. Especially Ice Fang which I can use on the upcoming Dragon type Pokemon. Next is obviously the most important part, let's make a trainer card. Perfect see, look how good this looks. Here's the code card if for some reason you want this mess. With that out of the way, let's go fight Hop. He has definitely been waiting long enough, considering it took us so long to walk here. My new TM Firefang is effective against Trevenant and I take it down no problem with two hits. This is the first time I think Hop has sent out Boltun second in any of my challenge runs, which I assume it's because it has some kind of dark type move like Bite or Crunch. I don't actually get to find out as a super effective dig takes it down in just one hit. Rillaboom is out and a super effective Firefang takes it to just under half HP. Answering back with its own super effective knockoff removes the leftovers and does some good damage. I finish off next turn with another Firefang. Using Dig again here allows Mew to take out Heatmore no problem in one hit, leaving just Snorlax. The Snorlax moves first and hits Mew with a body slam, allowing me to come in with the Uno Reverse and Revenge to take it out. This battle is usually pretty hard, so I'm quite surprised how easily I won here. It's straight through Route 8 and we make it to Sir Chester, ready to take on the Rock type gym. I decide to switch up some of Mew's moves here, so I have a Water type for fighting G-Max Colossal, and then head straight into battle. It's time to fight the gym leader's name that I can never remember, and Barbarical is the first Pokemon sent out. I start by using Dig, which takes it down to Yellow. After getting hit by a Razor Shell and taking loads of damage, somehow, a second Dig finishes it off. My best boy Shuckle is sent in and hitting it a few times with Brine takes it out pretty easily. Two Pokemon remain and I decide it's time to Dynamax and using two Max Geysers take down Stone Journer really easily. The Max Geysers I use set up well for fighting Colossal with the raining weather and a final turn of Dynamax. With Mew moving first, a lucky critical hit Max Geyser finishes the battle in style winning us the 6th gym badge. Now we have another battle against Hop. 
which personally I think would have worked way better after the 7th or 8th gym in this game as it always feels so soon after the previous one in these challenge runs. Again I switch up my TMs before going into this fight so I have Fire Fang for the upcoming Corviknight and Rillaboom. Dubwool is the leading Pokemon and after taking damage from takedown, using revenge takes it down in one hit. I try the same onto Snorlax and after using Crunch, a revenge takes it down to just a sliver of health, which luckily allows the hail to finish it off. Rillaboom is sent out and a knockoff could really mess me up here, but my good luck continues and Fire Fang causes a flinch allowing me to finish it off with the second the next turn. Corviknight is sent out and I keep up using the Fire Fangs, with the first doing about a third in HP damage. On the second hit, it critical hits and takes it out. Mew is on a roll right now and Pincurchin is sent in and a dig takes it straight down to yellow before Hop uses a potion. The second dig critical hits and takes it out in one hit. I'm not really sure what just happened, but I will take it. I'm so sorry Hop. It's time to head down to Route 9 and get Surf. Well it isn't even surf in this game is it, it's literally inflatable tyres for the side of your bike. I want surf back. With the ability to travel across water, it's time to get some good TMs including finally a stab psychic move. First I head to route 2 and surf across the lake to get TM psycho cut. Then I head to the island in the wild area to get air slash. Back to route 9 and I grab avalanche. And finally I get low sweep from the wild area. Getting back on track I make it to spike muff and we have a battle against Marnie. I teach the newly acquired Air Slash and Low Sweep in preparation for this and head straight into the battle. Starting out with Low Sweep, an attack onto Lipard takes it down to the lowest possible HP. Torment stops us from using a second attack and Marnie uses a potion, so I follow up with Revenge to take it straight back to red. Next turn Lipard uses Nasty Plot so Mew finishes it off with another Low Sweep. Scrafty is the next Pokemon out and a lucky flinch from Air Slash allows Mew to take it down in two moves without taking any damage. With Toxicroak sent out, I start with another Air Slash, but Toxicroak is able to move first and uses a Swagger, but luckily it misses and the Air Slash one hit kills it. Seriously, I'm getting so lucky in this run. Just more Peko remains and Mew is on full HP and it's looking good to win it on my first attempt. More Peko uses Bite first which does some good damage and Mew follows up with a low sweep taking it all the way down to red. A second Bite causes Mew to flinch and a third critical hits it and takes it out. Well I think I definitely spoke too soon about being lucky. I guess that's my luck back to normal now. I restart the game to avoid Mew being any higher level and it's time to try again. Lipard starts with a Torment again and a low sweep takes it down easily. Air Slash actually causes Scrafty to flinch again somehow and I finish it off next turn with a low sweep. A critical hit Sucker Punch from Toxicroak takes Mew to just above half HP and the Air Slash finishes it out with one hit. And now just the Super Morpeko remains. Mew starts and a low sweep takes it down to low. Returning with its own bite, Mew is able to survive and not get flinched this time. Next turn Morpeko actually uses a potion but it doesn't matter, two hits from the fighting moves take it down and win us the battle, allowing us to head straight into Spike Muff to take on Piers. I switch up some of my TMs to have a fairy and ground type move to counter some of Piers Pokemon. Now it's time to take on the dark type leader and this could be pretty difficult. Scrafty starts by lowering our attack with Intimidate, but surprisingly doesn't go for Fake Out like it usually does. Starting with a Draining Kiss, we take Scrafty down to low, but then it returns with its own super effective payback taking Mew to yellow. A second Draining Kiss regains a bit of our HP and finishes off Scrafty. I keep up the trend of kissing Pokemon to death and I use another Draining Kiss on Malamar taking it to half, before tanking another Dark type attack with the health regained. Using the second Draining Kiss takes it out safely and Mew is taken right back up to green HP. The Obstagoon is sent out third and I tried to go for a big brain play by using a non-attacking move expecting it to use Obstruct, which thankfully it does and I use Charm to lower its attack. I keep using Charm so I'm safe from a lot of its physical attacking moves and I take it out with a few hits. I brought in TM Dig for fighting the Skun Tank. After hitting it with Dig, Skuntank uses Screech, which sharply lowers Mew's defense, so I need to be careful for dark type attacks. Using Dig again, Skuntank is taken low, but manages to hit a Toxic while Mew is underground. Skuntank uses Sucker Punch to gain priority, hitting Mew all the way to red, barely surviving, allowing Mew to follow up with a Draining Kiss to win the battle. That could easily have gone way worse, but I earned the Dark Badge on my first attempt. When I leave the gym, I hear a bunch of explosions, but let's just ignore them, right, and head straight to Hammerlock. It's fine. Before heading in, I catch myself some bait to fill the second slot in this double battle. 
it's time to fight Raihan, the dragon leader, with the only two dragon Pokemon. I think it would have made way more sense if he was like a weather type gym leader rather than have a dragon badge. Mew is the fastest Pokemon and moves first, and then Ice Fang takes down the Flygon in one hit. This is actually pretty great because it avoids the attack reductions that it usually uses from Breaking Swipe. Bait just does some bait things. Next I try to start building up my attack stat ready to fight the Duraludon by using some Max Knuckles onto Gigalith which deals half HP and damage. A second Max Knuckle takes down the Gigalith but we are now paralysed from Glare from the Sandaconda which could mess up this whole battle. Thankfully Mew's ability actually mirrors effects and Sandaconda is now also paralysed. The Duraludon is sent in and goes straight to Dynamax using a Max Rockfall onto Mew dealing some good damage. Mew misses its first Max Knuckle and Sandaconda uses Earth Power dealing some damage so it isn't looking good for the win. This round the Sandaconda starts with a Protect and another Max Rockfall deals some big damage to Mew. Mew is moving last and a Brick Break lands dealing half HP damage to Duraludon. The final Max Rockfall from Duraludon takes Mew to 40 HP, but moving second, Mew takes down Duraludon with a Brick Break, leaving just the Sandaconda. An Earth Power Attack and Sandstorm Chip damage take Mew down to 2 HP, and I barely survived regaining a bit of HP with the leftovers. The next move, I went for a Draining Kiss to regain some of my HP, and I just had to pray that I didn't get paralyzed. Thankfully, Mew's move hits and gets back some HP, just for it to be taken away by another Earth Power. Back on 18 HP, I pray that the last Ice Fang hits, which it does, and we win the battle. It was so close though. Putting on my Nikes, I quickly speed through the fake victory road and make it to Winden, ready to take on the league. The Winden Pokemon Center has a direct upgrade to our Fang TM moves, so I buy these few to use. Switching up Mew's moves, it's time to head straight into the first battle against Marnie. A Brick Break is too much for Lipard and it takes out in one hit. Scrafty is sent out and Air Slash does some good damage, but a Crunch answers back, taking a third of Mew's HP. Scrafty gets a full restore and a Draining Kiss in Air Slash finish by taking it out. Using my Stab Psycho Cut is too much for Toxicroak and easily takes it down with just one hit. With just two Pokemon left, it's time to Dynamax against the Morpeko. I start by getting the ball rolling with a Max Starfall, which takes down Morpeko in one hit, just leaving the Grim Snarl. Keeping up with the Star Falls, it hits hard and takes Grimmsnarl to just below half, but so does a G Max Snooze from Grimmsnarl onto Mew. Thankfully, we are faster and the final Max Starfall takes it out and wins us the battle in pretty strong fashion. Now it's time for Hop to lose. Here we go. Using Brick Brick starts it off by taking Dubwool to Yellow, but a return Body Slam paralyzes Mew and could mess this whole battle up. But next turn, I hit with the Brick Brick to take it out. Mew likes breaking bricks and a critical hit takes down Snorlax to yellow. And another critical hit takes down Snorlax too easy with the Brick Smasher. Pincurchin is sent out and straight underground with Dig to deal half HP and damage. The second hit from Dig isn't actually able to take it out as Pincurchin keeps using Curse to boost its defense. I tried to end it quick with a Psycho Cut but Hop has other ideas and uses a full restore so it's time to play the long game. Psycho Cut is dealing about the same damage as a dig, so I stay with it and chip away at Pincurchin's HP. Apparently the paralysis actually means nothing in this battle, and Mew lands every single hit to finally take it down after about 5 hits. Big Dumb Me presses the wrong move and wastes a turn using Psycho Cut before Dynamaxing and using a Max Flare next turn to take out the Corviknight. The final Pokemon is Rillaboom, which starts off with a Max Darkness that barely does any damage. Keeping up the trend of paralysis meaning nothing, a Max Flare lands and takes down Rillaboom easily in just one hit to win us the battle. Someone that knows the master of paralysis, make sure to tell me down in the comments below how low a chance that was of happening. That was pretty mad. We have a quick pause in the league where Mew needs to go use Fire Punch on some Steel types before a battle against Oleana at the top of Rose Tower. Frostlass is Oleana's first Pokemon and a super effective critical hit Fire Punch takes it down cleanly with just one hit. Melotic is no match for Mew with its counters, and two Thunderfangs take it down. With three Pokemon left, it's time to Dynamax. A Max Quake starts off and destroys Salazzle, and a Max Flares does the same to Zarina, leaving just the Gigantamax Garbodor. One more turn of Dynamax for Mew, and a Max Quake takes it really low. A return G Max Malador does pretty much nothing, allowing Mew to finish off the battle with a Psycho Cut. Chairman Rose talks about his plan to build the Eye of Sauron and tells us he's going to blow up the stadium tomorrow. To be honest, that sounds pretty worrying. Maybe I shouldn't trust the Chairman. 
Now that it's the next day, it's time to take on the Budget Elite 4 where you get free heals after every battle. First fight is Bead. Mawile's Intimidate lowers Mew's attack, so our Fire Punch isn't able to do that much, only dealing half HP. Mawile attacks back with a Crunch, dealing about a quarter damage, allowing a second Fire Punch to finish it off. The Steel-type move Smart Strike takes down Rapidash with only two hits, leaving two Pokemon left. It's Dynamax time and it takes just one Max Steel Spike to take down Gardevoir, leaving just G-Max Hatterin. Another Max Steel Spike does some good damage, leaving it under half HP. The Hatterin attacks back, dealing a little bit of damage, allowing me to finish the battle with one final Max Steel Spike, beating Bead. I head straight back onto the pitch and it's time to fight Nessa next. This might have been one of the worst battles of all time and I'm going to try speak really fast and see the whole thing in one take. Are you ready? Here we go. Two Thunderfangs cause Galissapod to emergency exit. Two more Thunderfangs take out Seeking. Galissapod is sent back in and uses a full restore. Two more Thunderfangs cause Galissapod to emergency exit. Using another Thunderfang takes Barraskuda to the lowest possible HP. It attacks back with Fruit Chop? What? How can a fish chop? Doesn't matter, Thunderfang finishes it off. Glissopod is back in and a Thunderfang finishes it off. Now it's Dynamax time. Max Lightning takes out Pelipper easy and just Dreadnought is last. Max Lightning takes it to yellow, attacking back with Max Darkness and Mew is taken to half. Max Lightning finishes it off to win the battle. Phew, see, that was an interesting battle, right? Boring. Don't worry, the next battle is really interesting, I promise. Yeah, obviously I'm joking, Psycho Cut wipes the entire team. I should have played Shield, I actually thought this run might have been difficult at some points. Using Psycho Cut kills Halucha, Surfetched and Graplocked all in one hit to start off. The Phalanx is actually able to survive and it takes two hits to take it out, leaving just Machamp. Watch this, I used Max Flare to make the battle super interesting, right? I bet you're on the edge of your seat for this. Yeah, Max Mindstorm finishes it straight away, winning the battle. Just Raihan is left, who has a bit of variety in his team, so this might be a bit more interesting. Using a Dig starts off the battle and Torkoal is taken to yellow HP, but then it uses Yawn and sends Mew to sleep. Torkoal keeps using Solar Beam, which does barely any damage, and I spam through the sleep before using Dig to take it out. Flygon fell in one hit in the gym battle, and it's no different here, as an Ice Bunch takes it down in just one hit. Mew still likes digging holes, and two more hits with the JCB Excavator takes out Turtonator. Gudra is pretty tanky, so it takes two hits from Ice Punch to take it down, leaving just the Ace Duraludon. Time to go Dynamax and a Max Knuckle deals about a third HP in damage before casually tanking a Max Rockfall like it's nothing. The Duraludon barely survives the next Max Knuckle, so it takes a third to finish it off and beat Brihan, which puts an end to the budget Elite Four. Time to fight the budget champion. Nah, I'm joking, Leon isn't that bad. Oh yeah, I forgot German Rose said he was blowing up the stadium today. I guess it's best if I go stop him. It's time to punch some fire. A fire punch takes down X Cavalier easily. Per Circa needs two punches to take out. I Dynamax pretty early with just three Pokemon left and a Max Flare takes down Ferrophone in one. Kling Kling is the same and another Max Flare takes it out. Big Steel Elephant is able to survive the last Max Flare so I need to follow up with a punch to take it out and win the battle. Please stop blowing up stuff Chairman Rose. I quickly stop on the roof to catch a legendary and now please can I finally get my battle with the champion. Delicious, finally a good Pokemon battle. I brought Amnesia so I could get around the attack reduction of Aegislash and also boost my defense against Leon's primarily special attacking team. First round, Aegislash uses King Slash, so I get my plus two special defense from Amnesia. Even with Aegislash switching to attack form, I keep up the special defense boost to max it at plus six, which massively reduces the effectiveness of Shadow Ball. Aegislash is on cooldown from King Shield, so I make my first attacking move with a Fire Punch to take a third of its HP. Next, I take the risk of going for a second Fire Punch, hoping that Aegislash stays in the attack form, which it does, allowing me to take it down. Dragapult is up second and I predicted it would use Shadow Balls here, which do pretty much nothing to Mew's boosted defense. Moving first, the Shadow Ball critical hits and almost takes Mew out down to 21 HP. Attacking back and regaining some of the HP with Draining Kiss, I deal about half HP in damage. It's pretty back and forth here as Leon uses a full restore, but the constant HP stealing moves takes Mew back up to high HP before Dragapult is finally taken down. I brought Thunder Punch for both Charizard and Inteleon and it's pretty effective here. 
Inteleon reduces Mu's attack with Tearful Eyes, but is fairly easily taken down with two punches. Haxorus is sent out fourth and is physical attacking, so I Dynamax to add the extra HP, which is still only 1.5 times as I haven't used any Dynamax candies. A Max Starfall takes Haxorus under half and a Return Outrage doesn't do that much back. The second Max Starfall takes out and Mr. Rhyme is sent in next. It's my final turn of Dynamax and I use a Max Flare to take Mr. Rhyme under half HP. It answers back with a Tita Dance, which obviously does nothing because we're protected by the Fairy type Mist. I use a Fire Punch to finish it off and just Charizard remains. I start with a Thunder Punch which deals a bit of damage to Charizard but it returns with a Max Airstream that pretty much does nothing to Mew with its extremely high special defence. It's back and forth with these moves and Charizard is left on yellow when its Gigantamax ends and the leftovers help to keep Mew on pretty high HP. With the boosted speed Charizard moves first and a critical hit Fire Blast deals high damage to Mew taking it all the way to low yellow. Returning with a Thunder Punch takes it to just a sliver of health barely surviving. Thankfully Charizard misses its next Fire Blast, allowing Mew to finish the battle with a winning Thunder Punch. And with that, we beat Pokemon Sword with only Mew. I wonder how much more difficult it would have been having to play Pokemon Shield's Ghost Gym. Playing Pokemon Sword actually ended up being really easy and I probably should have done Shield, but it's too late now. I still had loads of fun with the challenge though as I got to use a variety of different moves with Mew learning every TM. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, make sure to join the Discord if you want a chance at winning the Mew used in this video. What challenge do you want to see next time? Make sure to comment down below or come tell me on Discord. With that, thank you so much for watching everyone. I will see you all next time in another challenge video.